Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing They Miss You When You Discard Them. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new, and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. Check out my socials for extra content. The links are in the description. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing they miss you when you discard them. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, you are likely looking for ways to make your ex miss you. In today's podcast, I'm discussing three points to consider about why doing certain things will likely make your ex miss you. So let's get straight into this. And point number one is the proof is in the mirror. So today we're speaking about why discarding someone will make them miss you. And if you're thinking, well, what does that even mean? Well, we're talking about behaving in a way where you don't give the other person the feeling that you need them. So when we're talking about discarding, we're referring to the concept of where you act, behave, live your life as if you don't need that other person. And if you need any evidence on this, just look in the mirror and you will see yourself as a dumpy feeling very uncomfortable due to the fact that you have been dumped. When we are dumped, we feel discarded. We feel like our ex doesn't want us anymore, doesn't need us anymore. We feel like we have been put to one side and they are living their life to the full. Now, what does this do to you? Well, it actually makes you want your dumper more. It makes you feel that you desire them even more probably than when you were together. There is nothing more attractive than rejection and rejection breeds obsession. So discarding, in a sense, is rejection. It's the feeling that somebody, that this person, that person, our ex, doesn't want us anymore. And if you need any proof about how powerful it can be, like I say, look in the mirror, you will see yourself. You are listening to today's podcast because you want your ex back. You're listening to today's podcast because you are likely going through the struggle. So you can feel what it feels like to be discarded, what it feels like to be rejected, what it feels like to be dumped. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's that's well and good. I understand that. But how can I discard my dumper? They've made the decision. They don't want to be with me anymore. They ended the relationship. The breakup was their choice. So how can I do that to them when they don't even want me? How on earth can I do this? Well, here is the beauty of how you can have that same impact on your ex, even though they did action a breakup. You know, that is the truth. That's the reality. They lost romantic emotional attraction. It hit the necessary low point. They decided to end your relationship. We can't get away from that. But the beauty of this concept is that even though your ex dumper doesn't necessarily want you back in their life right now, they do expect you to be there waiting for them as a type of safety net. So even though they may have even said, I never want to see you again, we're never getting back together, I don't want to be with you, even though they may have said those things, even though they don't want you to chase them, they don't want you to behave in a needy way, they don't want you to beg and plead, they do want to live their life the way that they want to live it right now. All of those things are true, But what they haven't told you is that they actually want, expect and believe that you will be there waiting for them in case they change their mind. So how can you behave in a way where you discard someone who technically speaking has discarded you? Well, the way you can do this is by living your life in a way which shows that you are living your life to the full, not them. Where it shows that you are not waiting for them. Which shows that you are a valuable individual becoming someone that they would find even more attractive than before. And you need to do that. But unfortunately, as we've already been talking about, they've ended the relationship. They came to the conclusion that you two together was not working. 
So if you are the same person that they dumped, well, it's very unlikely indeed that they will want to reconnect. So you need to improve, you need to grow, you need to live your life to the full. But if they see you pleading, begging, if they feel that you're waiting for them, if they believe that you want them back any moment of the day, well, guess what? They are not going to feel discarded. They're going to feel that you are their safety net. They're going to feel that you are there for them if they need you, even though technically right now they don't. They just like that feeling and that thought. If you behave in a way where you are not waiting for them, where you are not texting, calling, knocking on their door, begging, pleading, saying, I love you, I miss you, I can't live my life without you. If you aren't doing those things, then even though you might feel that is what they want, you are actually discarding them. Because if they don't get those things, if they don't get that feeling that you are there for them, well, they are being rejected, even though, technically speaking, they rejected you. It is the paradox of the breakup. And therefore, it's really important to remember, if you're looking for evidence about why discarding someone can create a feeling of them missing you even more, well, look, just look in the mirror. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast. Please like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And point number two is they lost gold membership. Now you might be struggling to not behave in a way where your ex dumper is the main person in your life. You might think, well, they've dumped me, but I still want to treat them as the king or as the queen. But you need to remember, if they are not your girlfriend, if they are not your boyfriend, if they are not your wife, your husband, if they are not your partner, then they have lost gold membership. Gold membership of you only comes with a romantic relationship. You would have treated your partner in a different way to how you treated even your closest friends. Certainly family, acquaintances, nobody else would have had the gold membership, as I like to call it, that your ex did. But now, now they must lose it. So what is gold membership? Well, gold membership is you going the extra mile. Gold membership is you allowing them things that you probably wouldn't anyone else. For example, this could be something such as you had a streaming platform that you were paying for and you both had a login, okay? And you're thinking, well, we both had a login. It's no biggie. Just because the relationship has ended, I'm not going to look bitter and twisted and just delete them from this. No, you know, they can keep watching. They can keep listening. It's fine, you know, because this will make me be someone that they respect because I'm letting them use these services still. Well, no, in my opinion, if someone ends a relationship, they lose gold membership and losing gold membership in this respect would be they no longer have access to the streaming services that you are paying for. Now, how do you go about this? Well, I don't think you should act in a way which makes you look very, very angry and bitter because that probably wouldn't show you in the best light. But they absolutely shouldn't be using these services forevermore. So what do you do? Well, in my opinion, you leave it one month. Now, the reason you leave it for one month is because sometimes breakups can be resolved very quickly. Now, I would say that if somebody really ends a relationship and the dust really has settled, well, unfortunately, it's likely to be a long time before you can have a realistic opportunity to reconnect. But sometimes the dust hasn't really settled and sometimes a breakup can be resolved within a few days or weeks. And if that is the case, you don't necessarily want to have cut all ties during this time. So I believe a good rule of thumb is to leave access to things such as streaming services for one month. If you and your ex have not reconnected after one month, it is completely reasonable for you to remove them from that platform. Now, this doesn't go just for streaming services. Of course, it goes for everything, everything you can think of, which could connect to them having gold membership of your life. They get in those benefits that only you gave them because you're in a relationship. They lose them. So I would suggest that if this is something where they are a member, they have got a connection to something like a streaming service, leave it for one month and then remove them. You don't need to contact them. You don't need to say, hey, I'm removing you. No, 
they should expect this, okay? They can't be bitter if you give them a month, one month, and then you take them off it. But there are other things as well. It's not just streaming services. Gold membership could be that they randomly reach out to you and they want a favour. Maybe they want to borrow money, okay? This is not something that you should be doing for someone who dumped you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be rude. It doesn't mean you have to be angry. That isn't going to help you. Maybe consider each request on its own merit. But generally speaking, unless it's an absolute honest emergency, the answer should be, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> I don't have the money to lend you right now. You should not be lending money to your ex. You should not be buying gifts for your ex. Buying a gift is for a girlfriend or a boyfriend. It's not for an acquaintance. It's not for a person you work with. And it's certainly not for an ex. So bear that in mind. Gold membership is for your partner. And they lose it. They lose it if they're no longer in a relationship with you. And this is one of the ways that they can feel discarded. Remember, we're speaking about today about they miss you when you discard them. And removing that gold membership is one of those ways that they really start to feel it. As long as you do it in the right way, as long as you don't behave in a way which is angry, argumentative, bitter, as long as you don't do those things, well, they're going to feel your absence. They're going to feel that rejection. They're going to feel you've discarded them, but they will respect it and understand it. Because you're not being angry. You're not doing things instantly. You're giving it a few weeks, a month, potentially, depending on what it is. But you are removing the benefits. Someone can only miss you if they're not having the benefits. You will only miss something if it is removed. You don't miss something that's always in your life. You don't miss a person. You don't miss a streaming service, okay? You don't miss something which is always there. So if you want your ex to miss you, you need to remove yourself and remove the gold membership. Now, if you would like advice and support about how to try and increase the chance of one day getting your ex back, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service, where me and you can speak one-on-one -on -one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website, www.dateme.tips, for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate via my audio coaching service. Talking about your feelings can also improve your mental health. It helps prevent the buildup of negative emotions, which can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, and even physical health issues. Speak your heart to free your mind. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast. If you feel that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description. And point number three is stop being their cheerleader. Stop being their biggest fan. Stop being the person who supports them and you will help them start to miss you by them feeling discarded. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let's consider that your ex has achieved something. They've achieved something which is really big. And you see people on social media congratulating your ex for what they've done. Now, should you be doing the same? Now, there might be, there may be some very rare instances, some caveats to the rule where this could be something that you could potentially do. Maybe you could give a reaction of some kind on social media. But that is a very rare instance. And this would be, have to be something that I would discuss with you via my audio coaching service to decide whether I believe it's a good idea. But as a general rule, if you want some general advice, most of you would fall into the category of where you shouldn't be doing this. So let's just say your ex achieve something really, really important. You see everybody congratulating them online. You shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be their cheerleader. They don't get the benefit of your love. Every person who gives them a congratulations is giving them a self-esteem boost. Why should you be giving them a self-esteem boost? Like I said, most of the time, you should fall into a category where you don't. There might be a few rare instances where it could be helpful, but no, most of the time, generally speaking, no. Don't be their cheerleader. Don't give them that self-esteem boost. Don't push them on that pedestal. Don't give them that benefit of you without them being in a relationship with you. They don't get that gold membership, remember. So they don't get the gold membership, but they also don't get you being the cheerleader, which is 
a slightly different concept. You've been their fan. You've been there for them. Maybe, for instance, they've had a really tough time of things and they send you a message where it's clear that they're looking for a boost from you. And you're starting to think, well, are they actually reaching out because they want to have a conversation and potentially get back together? Or do they just want their ego rubbed, okay? Now, it can be difficult. And if you receive contact from your ex, again, generally speaking, I do suggest you respond. I suggest you respond in a positive way. And if they are bringing something up, which feels like that you need to comment on in a respectful, kind way, then yes, generally you should do it. But you need to be watching out. Because if it feels like they're just looking for an ego boost, a virtual hook, you might say, well, they don't deserve it from you. They've got other people in their life. They didn't want you. So why are they coming back for just this? It can be difficult to decipher, but sometimes you can tell by the opening message. If a dumper reaches out to a dumpy for a reason of potential reconnection or certainly potential seeing how things go, they will likely say, hi, how are you? Or maybe they will say something very random, which involves the dumpy answering in a positive sense. They're not as likely to reach out and say, hey, I'm having a really bad day, you know, and almost looking for that sympathy instantaneous, okay? If they do that, it could be a red flag. I'm still not saying avoid that message. I'm still not saying ignore it. I'm still not saying be rude. I would suggest you respond in a positive way. But if you receive a message which instantly seems like they're looking for sympathy, just be wary, just be on guard. And if things are not looking the way as you may hope after three or four messages, it might be time for you to say, hey, you know, it's great to hear from you, but I'm a bit busy right now. I've got to go, um, you know, take care. And that way you can leave a conversation in a way where they are not feeling that you've been cruel or horrible. You haven't made things worse, but you've exited a conversation, basically meaning if you're just going to be speaking about yourself and wanting that sympathy, then I'm not going to be the one to do it. But you're doing it in a way which doesn't sound as harsh. And you're leaving that door open in case we do want to speak with you in the future about genuine reconnection. But generally, when we try to consider what you should and shouldn't be doing, you should not be their cheerleader. You should not be giving them thanks, benefits, promotions, celebrations. You shouldn't be doing these types of things to celebrate with them if they have dumped you. No, you shouldn't. They didn't want you in their life and now they don't get the benefits.